how many more bags or styles do I possibly need, right? That was one of the questions that you had and it's um, it, it's it's gonna be hard and a little challenging to explain. Hope you enjoy a little bit of the eye candy here. Obviously, these are two of my very, very cherished and amazing, amazing, amazing bags that I was able to get my hands on. If you haven't seen my unboxing of this one, probably not the most practical, but just speaks for itself in terms of how amazing it is so uh, definitely have a watch i will link it up here welcome everyone my name is amy and i um, asked you guys on instagram to give me questions for my next q a and this question was from judy zoo she said will you ever stop shopping at chanel now that i have all the right chanel bags the short answer is no obviously i'm not gonna stop shopping at chanel i think chanel has uh, more to offer beyond bags. Of course, I do have a very, very nice collection of Chanel bags. I can't possibly even think of which style I don't have yet that I'm uh, not currently obsessed with. Well, actually, I am obsessed with one of the newest ones, and we'll talk about that in a later question. I do feel somewhat at peace with my Chanel collection. I'm at this point where I'm also exploring Hermes, as a lot of you know, I'm I'm in this journey. I really appreciate Hermes from a very different point of view, um, mainly from craftsmanship and just from how timeless everything is, but in a very sort of mature and adult way. Chanel is still very fun. Of course, Chanel is timeless uh, for most things, um, but Chanel is just more fun and more fashion and therefore I, I will always associate my my main aesthetic with Chanel first and foremost. I think mentally um, I was already prepared to slow down this year because I I can't be possibly be spending on both Hermes and Chanel and anything in between like you know clothing and everything uh, and anything in between that's luxury I, I can't possibly be doing all that it's not sustainable. I shared the story of how I acquired this bag and um, how meaningful and everything it is. And uh, sadly enough, this was and this is the last bag that I will ever get from my current essay because she's no longer going to be with the company. Therefore, it kind of also changes the dynamic of how, well, I, I, I don't know yet because I, I haven't yet shot with my new essay. I'm sure it's gonna be fine, but it's just getting reacquainted with someone else that's new and um, he or she also needs to uh, get used to what I love and don't love in general and how I am as a shopper. And so um, there's just gonna be a readjustment phase. And also I, I do agree that I do have most bags that I can possibly need already from Chanel. I have the classics. I have uh, the seasonal permanent styles uh, that are classic and I have the quirky ones and I have all sorts of micro bags. So I, how, what, and possibly can I need uh, aside from just different variations of the same thing, right? Uh, in a sense, I'm very content. I'll always be attracted to something, I feel. There's still all beautiful accessories and uh, now I'm also getting into ready to wear. This is my beautiful Chanel jacket that I got pre-loved from Clara. And um, you know, I, 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 I still think there's a lot to explore. So no, not completely stop shopping at Chanel. I hope that answers your question, Judy. Um, I don't think I'll ever stop, stop. But I am definitely um, going to slow down. Next question by M. Jen. Luxury bags which are easy to travel with. From my collection, one of the easiest to travel with, in my opinion, is the mini square in caviar or a mini rectangle in caviar. Of course, it's not going to be your travel bag as in like, you know, like a backpack or even like a big tote where you can throw all kinds of things in it. It's not that kind of travel bag. For me, it's just the bag that I'm using at my travel destination. That is in terms of transporting it to the destination as well as while I'm using it at the touristy de destination, that is the easiest to, to get in and out and to use and to uh, look good in and, and to not be so 
uh, careful as to have to baby the bag so constantly, right? So that's what I mean by the easiest. Uh, but another um, easiest bag that I think will be a good choice as well is my Nano Speedy. Actually, I've decided to just take them out to show you. So more eye candy and also so that you know exactly what I'm referring to. So this is one of my most traveled with handbag that is high-end luxury, but it's small, it's compact, it's easy to pack. It's very carefree because it's caviar and it's black. So this is, this is my ultimate choice all the time. Uh, but I do think also that these two that are in my collection, so the Speedy Nano, and I finally found my little tag um, that I hot stamped in Singapore. I'm like, where did I put it? And I just attached it to another tote and I totally forgot. Um, anyway, I do think that these two would make very, very good travel bags as well. Uh, notice they're all very small and that is... Uh, that is my preference, of course, but it's also the fact that they're small, therefore they're very easy to pack in your carry-on because the last thing I want to do is check those in. I, I, I will never want to check in any of my luxury bags ever. Um, so with this one, the reason it's easy is because it's canvas. It's It really packs a punch. If you haven't seen my Nano Speedy, uh, what it fits, definitely have a watch. It's just um wonderful and it's it's a bag that i'm getting more and more use out of and i'm trying to get to know it more it's fairly new this is the newest um edition so the 2022 the newest nano speedy uh, it's slightly different from the past older speedy but i i think this is a wonderful choice obviously with vachetta it's not going to be so weatherproof um so that could be a con I suppose. This one I'm still babying it because it's so new. I just want to keep it as new as possible for longer but um, I know in the long term, in the long term, um, especially as I get to know this bag even more and as I uh, get to wear it even more and love it more, uh, then I I'll probably be at that point where I just I'm just gonna use the bag, like really use the bag. So it wouldn't be such a uh, an issue for me to wear in the rain as well. So any LV bags that are lightweight, uh, small-ish, and canvas are excellent choices. I think one of the ones that I owned previously, uh, which is called the Mudsi Porchette, which was what I said also, I think that would have made a really good travel bag. This one, why I do I think that it makes a great travel bag is because it's such a... Uh, it's very carefree. I just made an updated video of my trendiest bags and this is in the thumbnail so if you just want to look at my recent videos I talked about this bag and how I feel about it and how I feel like it is one of those trendy bags that are worth the investment. Um, it's just very hard wearing. It's very easy to pack. It's just fabric. Uh, there's no... there's no... Um, fear of squishing it because it's just very malleable. Let's say if you're going on a cruise and on a cruise you can dine out practically every night. This would be a really great bag to, to, to use while you're dining out every night and it's just so easy, it's so lightweight. Truthfully there are many options but um, it, it also depends on your personal preference and how you use your bags and how uh, how you define easy as well. For me, these are easy because they're easy to pack, easy to use. They're pretty carefree. From Miss Animali, what's your next handbag that you're eyeing? Hmm. Well, I am eyeing many things. Um, but you just mentioned handbags. So I... I the, the next handbag I'm really eyeing right now is the Chanel 22, which is what I said earlier <laughs> that um, we're going to talk about it a bit more. The Chanel 22 is one of those that, again, it's like the 19, it's like the Gabrielle. Many people are saying, oh, it looks like garbage. Oh, it looks ugly. Oh, it's this and that, um, which I don't want to disagree with just yet, but I also want to reserve my own judgment until I see it, try it and hold it and all that stuff. Uh, which unfortunately I haven't had a chance because ever since its debut, it's been sold out. Uh, we didn't even have one in any color to try. So, um, I mean, we did, but 
I wasn't at the store when we had it in orange. <laughs> so um, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to really, uh, really try it. Um, but I, I will reserve my judgment. I, I am still very much attracted to the Chanel 22. In particular, I would, of course, go with the small size. Amy would only go for the small size anyway, or the mini size. And so, um, yeah, personally, I am still very, very much interested in the Chanel 22. I kind of talked about it with my essay and she, she thought that it was too big for me. She knew that I am more of a mini bag person, which she's totally right because she's been my essay for several years. Uh, she knows me best in terms of my preference of what I tend to buy. But at the same time, not that it's the trend, not that it's because the trend is that big bags are in, of course that is the trend. But also I, I do have this slight problem <laughs> and it's kind of crazy for me to even talk about it or to admit it. I do have this slight problem where all my bags are mini size pretty much or very small that sometimes I just get annoyed and I don't want to deal with that and I just want a bigger bag. Sometimes I just want a bigger bag and I don't really have anything like that that I feel like is pretty and it's like Chanel, of course. Like I do have my Neverfulls and don't get me wrong, my Neverfulls are amazing. Uh, I'm still trying to sell one because I don't need both. So um, yeah, let me know if you're interested. I am selling the one where I personalized because um, that one is the newest. I'm not using it even though I did personalize it. But anyway, going back to the problem, the, the slight problem that I have, even though my collection is amazing, uh, all the bags tend to be very small. Um, uh, look, I, I love my small bags. I, I love my nano bags even, and I, I, I love my mini bags. And yes, I have a couple that are better size. So I do have my Chanel 19 that is a better size. I do have my newest denim flap that is a better size. And I do have a couple of bucket bags that are pretty good size. They, they are great size, but just just sometimes I just feel like I, I just want maybe another one that is a, also a very good size that is even better size. There is also a part of me that um, for once I am maybe a bit more reluctant at buying right away. Whereas in the past when the 19 came out and when the Gabrielle came out, I I couldn't wait to just buy, buy it right away when it first came out. I, I was really trying my hardest to get the first iteration because I just wanted to get my hands on them. Um, there's maybe a bit of reluctancy on my part where I I may want to wait a couple seasons or maybe even a se just a season to just see how it goes, right? Maybe one season is not even enough. Let me break it down for you. I do fear um, the fact that because it's a, a slightly larger size bag and yet even though I'm going with a small, I, I do fear, I do fear that maybe it can get heavy for me. Again, that's just things that I'm trying to analyze, pros and cons, because it is a shoulder bag. It can get heavy if I load it up. Uh, despite that I'm going for the size small, I try to watch some videos here and there. And, you know, everyone's interpretation of heavy is different too. So is it going to irritate me? That's something I'm not sure. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is I do think about resale value and I don't let that deter me so much because I do love the style. I personally do love the style. I love the look. I love the garbage look, if that's what you want to call it. I, I just think that it's such a cool sort of, um, it's just a cool everyday Chanel bag. That's where I'm at with the Chanel 22. And um, Feel free to give me your feedback if you own one and what size and how you feel about it. I think it's still kind of early for many people to form a long-term opinion. So only time will tell. And of course, as soon as I'm able to test one out, I'll definitely want to talk about it some more on this channel. <laughs> the next question is by who gives a lux? That's a funny name. Have you declined any bag offers? For example, another Birkin that is not the specs that you're looking for. 
So to answer your question is no, I haven't declined. Well, declined as in like, I haven't ever been shown, like been unboxed a bag and then I declined it because so far I only have the one, which is my Hermès Bicotin. And the the moment I saw it, I, I just, I mean, it's not really the moment that I saw it. It's the moment that I held it. The moment that I held it, I, I just knew. I was like, my gosh, this is my bag. This is my Picotin Touch 18 size in black Togo, oh, sorry, black Clémence and Palladium hardware. And it's just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I just love this bag so much. The moment I held it, I just knew it's my bag. I mean, it's, it's just my bag. <laughs> so I never had the opportunity to decline a bag because this is my only bag that I've been really offered. Um, my essay did sort of ask me whether I was interested in this and that, and I've always just straight up said no if I didn't like that style. So does that does that count as declining an offer? I don't think so. I have declined many bags uh, suggestions if that's uh, that if that counts as your question. So for instance, I have declined the Evelyn, I have declined the Rouli, and I I I actually have declined a Picotin or Picotin, but only because of the color. Because uh, I was asked if I would be interested in Nata color, which is kind of the cream night nice white color. I I love a white color, but it's just that. I was still waiting for my first Hermes bag, even though it's not in quota. I just wanted it to be more neutral, everyday, carefree, and I didn't want it to be white. Not yet. Not to say that I don't want a white one now. I do. <laughs> I would love a white one or a gold one. Uh, but as my very first one, I, I said no to Nata. So um, I think those were pretty specific suggestions. So I had a feeling that those were just either on their way to the store or they had it maybe and um, he was just trying to gauge whether I liked it or not and I just said no I, I didn't want to waste anyone's anyone's time not even mine if I knew that I wasn't attracted or if I knew that strategically I didn't want to accept those and lose the opportunity of getting like this which of course I had no idea I was gonna get this but you know what I mean like I just wanted ex exactly what I wanted so yeah, I hope that answers your question and I promise, I promise, a lot of you are anticipating and getting anxious about me getting my offer and I promise I will share it once once it's here. Once I have it, I will share it. Um, but I, yeah, I'm pretty picky, right? I'm pretty picky as to what I want and I will, I will decline a color that I don't want first. Um, because as much as I love having duplicates of colors, well, actually, I don't love that, but I have I have done a lot of duplicating colors for the same style, especially with Chanel. I don't want to do that with Hermes because it takes so long to get just even one bag. Therefore, I am being being very very choosy with Hermes. Um, and even my essay at this point, he knows, uh, he knows that for me, it's it's mostly black. Like he'll know that for sure black I'll always tick. In, in that sense, he kind of knows me very well. The next question is by Lizzie C. Will you ever move back to Montreal? Um, probably not. I don't foresee a need uh, for needing to move back. Of course, my parents still live in Montreal and I would love to be able to move them here, in fact, but it's a bit um, it's a bit difficult because you know they they still own a house. It's my childhood home, and um, they're so used to everything there. And every time they visit, they love it. They love it in Vancouver, but they they also made uh, many many comments about um, how things are expensive here. Even though they love coming and visiting us. Um, they do come here just to visit us, obviously, and also they love the food here. Uh, mainly my mom especially, because my dad has only come a couple of times. Is it a couple? I think he only has come a couple of times, both times for my wedding and my brother's wedding. But my mom has come definitely more often, and um, yeah, so it's... 
I don't want to say like it's a for sure no, I'm not ever going to move back to Montreal. However, I don't see how I can either because um, my husband's family, like his whole family, extended family and all that are all here. And obviously I'm married to him and I have my own family. So I don't see how I can move there <laughs> unless we all decide to move there. Wow, I myself have almost lived 12 years in Vancouver so I I've lived a very long time here in Vancouver so um probably not but never say never I suppose like I, I don't know what would prompt me to move back but um I probably wouldn't the next question is by Lux Monologue will you consider purchasing the Lindy or the Evelyn it's interesting we just talked about the Evelyn earlier so with the Evelyn I don't think I will I'm not attracted to the style to be very honest it's definitely just a crossbody style and uh, I don't love the strap I don't love the fact that the strap is fabric and it's very long it's unadjustable so um, yeah I, I'm not I'm not super attracted to it I think it's a very beautiful heritage style but it's just not me so i i'm not probably not gonna get one but i don't want to ever say never because like i said like these things can change my taste can change who knows maybe one day i'll like revamp my whole collection and be just all Hermes. who knows i think that happens to a lot of people i'm not sure why it would happen to me but i'm just saying like these things can happen so i don't want to ever say no no but for now it's it's no lindy however i do like the 26 and up sizes i'm not interested i'm only interested in the mini lindy which of course apparently the entire world is is, in is interested in the mini lindy which is very very hard to get at the moment um so who knows when i'll ever get one I, I I asked about it many times, trust me, and it's one of the the hardest get bag to get. I was told that it's probably harder than a quota bag, that I would have to wait longer than waiting for a quota bag to get offered a, a mini Lindy. That's insane. Visually, aesthetically, uh, I am I, I'm just attracted to it. It's young, it's fresh, it's cute, and it's uh, travel friendly, and honestly, it's big enough for me, I think. I have tried my friend's one. VCA Sweet Alhambra Mother of Pearl Earrings or Vintage Alhambra Onyx Necklace. That is the tough one. Um, they're both very pretty. I am attracted to both. And I, I honestly think I can pull off both. Aesthetically, I think both would work very well for me. Sweet Alhambra Mother of Pearl Earrings, they're just beautiful and sweet and i like that they're mother of pearl because it's brighter for earrings i like it when it's brighter but the onyx vintage alhambra which is a slightly larger size is also very nice and especially because it's an onyx just picture my uh, outfit today so i'm wearing my hermes very very demure farandal necklace which you kind of see you don't see um but just picture the alhambra onyx vintage size and I think even layered with this would be wonderful and so that's a tough one I think if I had to choose one first I would choose the necklace because I have more earrings that I can rotate that I might even prefer wearing more um, case in point all my Chanel earrings all my costume Chanel earrings. I have so many to rotate that I feel like adding the Alhambra, sweet Alhambra, even though they're beautiful, will just be, will just make me have to wait longer to wear any of my Chanel costumes. So yes, I do have some necklaces, but I feel like with the Onyx necklace, uh, it, it can sort of, it can sort of also be more every day like a, a style that i can wear every day and still blend in well with uh, a lot of my everyday outfits so i feel like i get more crossbow wear with a necklace uh, a fine jewelry necklace so that's what i would go with but i do like both t cabes 129 what do you think your next fine jewelry purchase at Hermes will be? I was initially eyeing a pair of earrings to match my necklace, but 
as I just mentioned earlier, my reasoning for kind of delaying that a little bit is because I have no issues wearing this necklace and just rotate all my costume earrings. They're just so good together. They're, this necklace is just such an easy, just kind of blend in. You see it, you don't see a type of necklace. So um, even though I was initially thinking of adding earrings to go with it, um, it's not such a priority. So I feel like it could be earrings, but it could also be just a bracelet because at the moment I only have the one and this is lovely. This is the love bracelet small and I love it. Uh, but I would love to add another one. Not that I, again, it's not very, none, none of these things are very much, um, like I, I need to add it in a hurry. Not really. So I am eyeing certain things, you know, I am just taking my time to add them. And that leads to the next question because the question is Canada, in Canada, there is only, um, you're only allowed one bag per year, one quota bag that is. How do you manage not overspending and the anxiety of waiting? I can only share what I feel and have been going through over the past, yeah, over the past year, just because, again, I've only started my journey relatively recently. At first, I was reluctant to even get into Hermes because um, it's not that I don't like the idea of trying their bags. And of course, that comes with trying everything else they offer because you can't just get their bags. You have to buy everything else to get bags. Um, that is the unspoken rule, right? Of course, they will never say that out loud to tell you out loud that that's what you have to do. Unless you're in Asia, then they will tell you. But here and in many places, Western world, I don't think they will ever really say that out loud too, too much or too straightforwardly. So um, that's just an understood rule that you have to go through and do process that you have to do. So I, I was quite reluctant to get into this whole Hermes journey for many, many years, but the pandemic hit and I was like, that's it. Life is too short. <laughs> what am I still waiting for? And at that point also, I was celebrating my 40th birthday <laughs> at that year. Um, yeah, last year was my 40th birthday. So I decided that's it. It's my time to it's, it's my time. It's my time to, to stop feeling like I, I, I gotta wait even longer or, or, you know, whatever reasons I was giving myself. So I just went for it. Um, but of course I did a lot of research and of course more and more people are also sharing their experiences on YouTube and then friends. Um, and I also have a couple of local friends, some subbies who share their experience with me. So I kind of have an idea of how things work. A lot of you had gotten your offer after a few weeks and not even buying much. And those are fantastic, fantastic examples of how it could be. Uh, however, I also have local friends, again, local subbies who also share their experience of how it works locally because I, every store is different and also every country has different stock and everything so i was very well aware that canada is not going to be an easy ride <laughs> but i was still looking forward to it and i of course went into it and i'm not gonna not finish something i started so um i'm hanging in there you know like there's a lot of up and down uh, the way to manage it is to take it a day at a time, really. It is a lot about also strategically not just give in to any um, any sort of offers that you don't absolutely love. Like I said earlier, my essay did suggest many different styles that I just knew I didn't want to get those as my first bags. Knowing what you want and wait for it because there are going to be many temptations or even just not temptations, but like suggestions because that's what they have at that time. And they're going to try to suggest that to you in order to satisfy you because once they satisfy a, a need for a client, then they can move on to someone else, right? Or the need of another client and get the ball rolling. But it doesn't mean that you have to say yes to everything, right? So that's just how I've been managing it, I suppose. You just really take it day by day, but also 
uh, don't just say yes to everything and it's totally okay to say no to things. I have many friends that have been with Hermes for several years and their subsequent bag purchases come easier um, and they probably get the better choices first, you know, that type of thing. So I am faithful. I, I do believe that that will happen to me eventually as well. So uh, that's how you that's how you do it, I think. And if Hermes sounds hard, Chanel was not easy. Not easy at all. If you guys remember how um, <laughs> how much hustle I had to go through to get this and to get anything else that I have, uh, and sometimes with the help of friends too, it is not easy at all. It's just the same hurdles that you have to go through, but different, you know? I wouldn't even say that Chanel is easier. It's really not. It's a different type of anxiety because you just know the collection is here, but you don't know who, which, like, you don't know if you can get it. It's it's always like almost like a 50-50% chance that you may or may get not get for a certain season. It's always like that. Um, so Chanel is also very hard and Chanel has the exact same game, but just even less obvious in a sense because you honestly don't even know how they choose who they offer sometimes you you don't know and every i know in in canada we have the lottery system where whereas in the states they have wait lists so it's wholly different too so um yeah chanel hermes those are just just as hard so you gotta just you just you just gotta you know, keep doing your best. We're planning to visit Canada sometime this year. Does Chanel and other luxury brands, are they more lenient to tourists in terms of stock availability? And for example, Chanel, Black Square, Rectangle Mini, Seasonal Bags, etc. I honestly think that for Canada, um, whether you're a tourist or not, it's gonna be the same thing as in that if they have the stock and you're there, they will offer it to you unless it's already been put aside for their own client. So here's the deal. I feel like if you walk into a Chanel on launch day and they have nothing, however, you're looking at your neighbor and they have everything that you asked for and you're wondering why did my essay just tell me that there's nothing well that's because well that person's either a vip or th those things have been put aside for that client and that essay won the lottery for those items to offer to her client so um that will happen whether you are a tourist or not um the other scenario is if you walk into a chanel and it's not launch day and they happen to have something that you ask for that they can offer you, say something like this, very, very iconic and so hard to get usually, but it just happened that that day, it just came in and you happen to just walk in and ask about it and it wasn't reserved for anybody, then yeah, I, I think the essay will just let you buy it and you count yourself really lucky because you're there at the right time, the right place, so I don't really think there is a distinction between whether you are a client or a tourist if that scenario happens because that can happen to anybody and it happened to me a couple times too like I didn't ask about that bag but I just happened to walk in and they just happened to have it that day nobody has claimed it yet and I got it so um, I don't think they're more lenient at all to uh, tourists, it's the same. It's the same whether you're tourists or not, I feel. Um, so yeah, I hope that you have fun shopping here and I just hope that you're lucky enough that whatever you're looking for, that they just happen to have stock. It's the best case scenario is like that. Actually, I'm gonna leave it in the cards now. The heart bag video, I'm gonna leave my last Q&A video down below in the cards. So, uh, and if you can't find it, just go in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You can also support me further by becoming a channel member. Have a great day and week ahead of you. I'll talk to you guys again very soon.
拜。